Welcome to part three of the Industrial Revolution. Now we're going to take a look at the cotton industry. In the mid 18th century, cotton was a very highly desirable uh, material, but it was also very difficult to produce. Right? Cotton was grown first in the North American colonies, that becomes the United States, and the West Indies, right, the modern day Caribbean. Uh, by 1750, the supply of cotton being produced in the colonies was adequate thanks to slave plantation uh, in the American South, right? But still, despite that, the process of producing cotton uh, was rare and it was expensive, right? Cotton had to be separated from its own seed, which was an ar arduous process for the cotton being grown in the Americas, which was a short staple co cotton, is short fibers. Right. Then it had to be hand carded and combed. Right. Then it had to be spun on spinning wheels into thread. And then finally, the, it had to be woven by hand by these heavy looms that required two people to operate. So what you end up with is cotton is a very rare commodity. In fact, uh, a, uh, a pound of cotton cost about 11 shillings in the mid 18th century, which was more than the average worker made in an entire uh, a week. Right. Innovations, though, are going to change all this and make turn cotton from a very cottage industry into a major industry. Now, as we'll see, as each of these innovations come along, what they do is they create a shortage in another part of the industry, which creates more innovation, right? See, I mean, there's a cascading effect that builds upon itself, okay? You have this arduous process of making cotton, right? Uh, in 1733, John Kay invents the flying shuttle. Remember, you have these heavy two-person looms that you're using to make the fabric right now. Well, the flying shuttle takes care of that, right? The flying shuttle is a lighter, quicker form of a loom, and it can actually be operated with just one hand, right? So now, all of a sudden, you're producing the fabric really quick. Now, your shortage is in the cotton uh, fiber itself, right? You need the cotton uh, um, thread. You need to find some way to spin it faster. In um, 1763, James Hargreave is going to address that by creating the spinning jenny. The spinning jenny is a spinning wheel that has eight, ten, or sometimes even more spindles on it, allowing a single person to spin multiple cotton threads at the same time. Now, of course, the problem with the spinning jenny is that it produced a thread that often would break inside the flying shuttles, right? It wasn't strong enough. Well, six years later, Richard Arkwright is going to develop the water frame, which is going to address this. The water frame, or the throstle, or the roll drawing machine, as it's also known, uh, uh, would actually strengthen the thread by twisting it before it entered the spinning jenny, and thus making a stronger, more durable thread that didn't break in the flying shuttles. All right, so now, you've taken care of the shortage in the fabric ma making, you've taken care of the shortfall then in the thread making, so now your shortfall is back in the actual cotton fiber itself, the production of raw co co uh, uh, cotton. The deseeding process was arduous. It usually took a field hand eight hours to deseed one pound of cotton, right? But in 1793, the cotton gin will be invented. Most often attributed to Eli Whitney, though there'll be several competing patents at the same time, um, the cotton gin would allow a single person through a hand crank mechanism to deseed instead of one pound in say eight hours, they could do over a hundred pounds in eight hours. So you could DC this short staple cotton that was being grown in the American South and in the Caribbean. Okay, and so now you're feeding those uh, those water frames and the spinning jennings there, uh, and cotton the cotton industry is going to literally explode. A matter of fact, uh, some of these things are going to get industrialized, right? Like for example, in 1780, Samuel Crompton is going to invent a thing called the mule. The mule is a whole series of spinning jennings that are linked together and powered by a water wheel, right? Now we have basically textile factories. <laughs> 